Welcome to our review on making medicines. In this video what we're going to do is understand the different factors that can affect the cost of making medication and some of those other factors that come into play in terms of what we need to do to get that medication on the shelf in the shop. So first thing then, these different factors that we actually have to consider when working out how much it's going to cost to make a new medication. So in the table there you can see all these different factors and a quick description about them as well. So the research and testing stage first of all, that's where we actually have to go through, carry out all these different tests in order to make sure that what we've made is safe and effective and obviously the research part there is finding a chemical to even carry out those tests on. Second factor are labour costs, this is basically like paying people's wages. In order to make these medications we need some very skilled people and skilled people they have to be paid. So the more people we need, the higher the labour costs will be. Third one is our energy costs. Anytime we are running manufacturing machinery, we obviously need electricity and electricity does cost money. So the more machinery we've got or the longer it has to run for, the higher those energy costs will be. Fourth one is the raw materials. Now, some of these raw materials we may be using to make medications might be quite rare or quite expensive. So we will find that in some cases we need these very complicated reactions in order to actually extract that drug from the original item like the plant and then turn it into our final drug product. So the raw materials themselves can be very costly. The time it takes to development is also significant. Okay, We're not talking about a couple of years, we're talking around about a decade to develop a drug. So if you imagine having to pay all those labour costs, all the rent costs for your factory etc for a decade before you can even sell the drug, then it gives you some idea about how significant Because if we're sitting there thinking we've made this amazing drug, we need people to know about it. Okay, Doctors have to know about your drug in order to prescribe it. So that means you have to send out your drug reps to all the different healthcare professionals to tell them all about your drug and why it's better than what's on the market already. So we've mentioned the fact we've got to go through these different tests for our drugs before we can sell them. So this is not a one stage process for testing. We've got six different stages that we've got to go through before that drug's going to be licensed for use. So the first one there is we'll carry out some basic computer simulations just to check that the drug does what it's meant to. If that looks like it's going to work, then we go on to some cells grown in the lab. So we've got little Petri dishes with living cells in there and we'll add our drug to it. Obviously at this point we're looking to see does it outright kill those cells and also working out what dosage works nicely on just the cells in the lab themselves, okay? Making sure that the cells aren't killed, that they don't mutate oddly, anything like this. Stage three is the animal tests. So this is where we will take living organisms and then give the drug to them to see those side effects. Now, obviously cells will tell us so much, but living animals, we get to see how it affects things like heart rate, breathing rate, behavior, and things like this that we can't get from cells in a lab. So the animal tests are needed at that point. Four is the healthy human volunteers. So these are people that don't have the condition whatsoever. They are purely 100% healthy humans who volunteered to have this drug tried on them. And again, what we're looking for here are any serious side effects. If we pass the healthy human volunteer side, then we go on to a small patient group. So we take a small number of people with the particular disease that we're looking at trying to cure and we'll administer our new drug to them. We'll obviously record a few things, again, looking for any side effects, and secondly, looking to see how effective our drug is in comparison to any existing treatments. If that one all looks promising, we go on to stage six, which is the large patient group. One thing that all scientific studies should do is to have a nice large group of people. If it's only a small number, your data isn't going to be very reliable because there could be little things that would have a big impact. If you've got a big patient group, then that makes those little effects much smaller. So a large patient group, again, those people with the disease, checking to see, is this going to be confirmed from our findings for the small patient group? So we're looking for how effective the drug is and are there any other side effects that we haven't recorded to date? Now, we've heard this phrase payback time from our core science when we were looking at insulation in houses. 
In terms of our medications, the payback time here is how long it takes that drug company to make back the money that they spent developing it. And what they need to know is, will that payback time actually be shorter than the time they have on their patent? So any drug that's made is applied for a patent, and then that means that only the drug company that developed it can sell it for a certain length of years. Now, if you're not going to make your money back in that time scale that you've been given, then that becomes a problem because at the end of that patent, what happens is every other drug company can start to manufacture your medication and then you're going to find that the price that they sell it for decreases. So it eats into your profits. So payback time is a very important factor to consider. Now, the purity of a drug is obviously very important. If we've got impurities in any form of drug that people are taking, then it might make them ill or we might get unexpected side effects. So they need to carry out tests to ensure that the drug that they've produced in their batch process is as pure as it could be. Now we've got three different ways that we can actually measure the purity. We can look at the melting point and the boiling point. So for each of those what they're going to do is take a small sample, heat it up and see at what point does it turn to a liquid and what point does it turn to a gas, okay? Then they can compare that against the standard value which they will have got from the pure version of their drug. As long as those match, then that's fine. If they don't, it tells us there's impurities in there. The third way is by using this process called thin layer chromatography. Thin layer chromatography then is where we're starting off with a plastic or glass plate that's got a thin layer of powder coated onto one of its surfaces. Now what we do is we'll take our samples of our drugs and put a little spot on the bottom of that plate and we'll also have a sample of our pure drug next to it. Now what we then do is we allow it to sit into a solvent and as the solvent moves up the plate it drags the different chemicals found within those samples up the plate too. Depending on what the chemical is they move at different speeds so when it's finished you get different spots on the plate. Normally we can only view those when we've reacted them with certain chemicals or viewed them under UV light, okay? We can heat them up in some cases as well, which then reveals those spots. But what we then see is something like the diagram that you can see on the right-hand side there. So the far left-hand column there, you can see that's our pure drug. So it just has that one orange spot. So that's what we'd be hoping to see in any of our other chemicals that we're running through. Then we've got our two samples, A and B. And what we can see there is that they have two other chemicals in A and three other chemicals in B because the spots are in different positions. They all contain the pure drug but there are other things there too and that's what we're looking for. If there are other spots that we wouldn't have expected those are the impurities.